Welcome to Mondello Park for round two of the Irish Winter Rallycross Championship. This event yet again attracts huge entries from the highly competitive supercars, super modified, juniors and stock hatch. And with over 90 competitors out here today in Mondello Park, it makes for another great day's racing. Well, thank you, Adele. And after one round of this new winter series, it's Derek Job, who is a slender lead on the points table. Derek Job, you're currently leading the supercars. Yeah, we're leading after the first round, but it's early days. Like, I think we're leading Dermot by two points or something like that. With the newest addition to his fleet, the Citroen C4, still in the workshop after the British finale in Croft, George Tracy is racing his trusty Metro 6R4 today. George Tracy, you're out today in the Metro 6R4. Yeah, it should be a bit of fun today. We're just out for a jolly, see what happens. We had a lot of damage the other week with the Citroen C4, so uh, that's the way in the body shop getting repaired after Croft. So just see how this car goes today. Well, now that you've had an opportunity to see some of the protagonists, we go to the grid for the first of our heats, and it is Derek Job there, the uh, championship leader, who uh, gets the best breakaway and leads into the first corner ahead of... George Tracy in that lovely Metro 6R4 and George just helping Derek Job along there ever so slightly. Michael Morris is following behind in the Subaru at uh, some slight distance but great action up in front between the Escort and the Metro 6R4. These of course names that are uh, rapidly disappearing from the roads now given the uh, age of the Escort and indeed the Metro but certainly for Rallycross they're still very very formidable uh, machines indeed and wonderful power and particularly the sound of the Metro 6R4 in the hands of George Tracy has a look there at the inside line and just helping Derek Job along but Derek a very experienced uh, rally driver before switching to rally cross certainly not phased in the slightest by that he pulls the escort back and continues on on his winning way up to take the checker flag Tommy Graham, you're back out here in Mondello Park today, but you've had a little bit of a break from us. Yeah, I rally crossed years ago in from mid eighties to mid nineties, and I went rallying then. And I started back rally crossing here a few weeks ago, so I'm enjoying it. Derek Carnegie ended his British campaign on a high with a win at Croft, and the Kalani man is now racing with confidence in the Fiesta. The car seems to be going better now, and uh, the previous week here in Mondello we had a good run as well. So. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a good day today, so we'll certainly hope it does happen. Paul Grogan, you're out today in the supercars. You're actually the youngest driver in the class. How does that affect you? You don't mind racing against all these experienced lads? Ah, no, not really. Sure, it's a bit of a challenge, you know. I say Once we're out there in the track, we're all equal, you know. It's nice to have some experience like Dermot Carnegie around, and they're very helpful with a few tips, charge race, you know. So it's, it's a nice welcoming class, in fairness now. Well, it's great to see youth coming into this class, and certainly Paul Grogan has been a revelation since he started racing in the Subaru. While it's Derek Carnegie, fresh from his exploits in the British Championship, who leads away this time from uh, his close contender there, Tommy Graham, in the Escort. A lot of blue smoke from the back end of the Escort, and you can see the youngster Paul Grogan keeping well in touch with these much more experienced drivers up in front. And not only are they more experienced in terms of uh, car development, they'd certainly be ahead of the Subaru and amount of work being done on those Subarus by the Morris uh, brothers from Punclody County Wexford. But uh, certainly Paul Grogan did a fine job. Tommy Graham, as ever, is uh, a revelation in this escort. He's certainly not a man afraid to uh, throw it at a corner. Very exciting, the flame there from the car in these uh, darkened conditions here at Mondello Park. But Dermot Carnegie, one of the most experienced rally crossers around in the Ford Fiesta, he comes up to take the win, being followed home by Tommy Graham as Dermot Carnegie takes the checkered flag. Multiple modified champion Michael Coyne is no stranger to Mondello and the Talaman has already done enough in the early heats to qualify on pole position for the A final. Michael Coyne, whenever there's a rally cross event, you're not too far away, that's for sure. Definitely, yeah, I've been coming here a long, long time. I've been competing for about 13 years and uh, in, in the 13 years we've had 11th class championship wins, so we're not too bad. 
Uh, the two brothers, as you know, Brendan and Willie also race, so it's, it's, it does be good. It's a family thing, you know. Kieran Kern, you're racing today in the super modified class. You'd be looking for a good day out there on the track. Um, yeah, I am indeed. I've had the first heat and uh, I won it, so I'm pretty pleased with that. So hopefully, I can get another good time and into the, straight into the air final. Well, it's to one of the heats for the modifieds that we go. Sean Galvin there in the mini is effectively on pole, but it's Willie Coyne, brother of Michael Coyne, who takes an early lead from Kieran Kern there in the Opal, just having some problems in third, getting uh, things right. As a look at the inside line, Sean Galvin, the mini, though, making that mini very wide. He doesn't have to. There are quite uh, wide wheel arches on that machine giving him as much traction as he can get his hands on. Willie Coyne then leading from Sean Galvin. Then with Kieran Kern in hot pursuit. And Kern really would like to get ahead of the Mini because if he wants to make an impact on Coyne and Kern there gets alongside the Mini on the run down the main straight. Now he heads off in pursuit of Willie Coyne. These two Novas very closely matched. Here they come then down to the hole in the hedge. Kieran Kern having a look at the inside line, but Willie Coyne there keeps the door firmly closed. These guys have uh, raced against one another for quite a number of years now, and it really is zigzag between them in terms of car preparation and driving talent. But uh, Willie Coyne with the upper hand now as he comes out of Dunlop for the last time to take the win in this heat. Kieran Kern still not best, makes a run to the line, but Willie Coyne takes the win. Willie Coyne, you had a great battle out there with Kieran Kern. Just tell us about it. Uh, it was fantastic. Started on the, the front row, uh, got a great start, and it just all it all fell into play. Uh, trying to push the car so hard, be, considering the car is 20 years old and it's old technology, it's eight valve and that. I think it's about time we moved up into the 16 valve category. So it'll make it a lot more even playing field. But I'm driving it to the maximum, and I can't get any more out of it. Stock Edge champion Derek Toll is making the transition to modified class this season and running two cars per event is proving a handful. Derek Toll, you've got to be one of the busiest drivers here in Mondello today. You're racing in two different classes. Yeah, glutton for punishment at the moment. Um, we're uh, still racing the stock hatch until the championship is over. And we have a new car which we went and bought in Sweden um, a few weeks back. And uh, we're just really testing in that at the moment. And uh, it makes for a difficult life. Next to the heats for the modifieds then has Chris Grimes on pole position, Joe Cahill in the centre, Peter McCarroll there in the Renault 5 on the outside making a blistering start as he comes across, that car looks uh, rather out of shape though, Brian Keegan coming through there, Brendan Coyne coming through, Derek Toll, the newcomer to the class there at the back of the field and Peter McCarroll really has a handful in the Renault 5, he's uh, just a returnee to Rally Cross and uh, just trying to get this car back to the standard before he uh, left off of the sport. There you see Derek Toll just going through the shot, but McCartan still holding on to the lead. Chris Grimes is in second. And coming through there is Pierce Brown in the BMW. Derek Toll then, then Joe Cahill in the middle. Oh, and that's uh, Derek Toll, the newcomer to the class. He's on the roof. That's the Honda Civic there, and that uh, naturally brought out the uh, red flags. And we see Derek Toll there being helped from the car. And he's very, very disappointed about that. Here we get a look at it again. He comes into Dunlop. Then you have Joe Carl in the little metro there, just getting through on the inside, just tags him. And the car is obviously a little bit unstable there and puts it right over on its roof. Though a very, very strong, well-built car that. So uh, good news, Derek Toll is uh, fine. Car a bit damaged. We're we see Brendan Coyne there at the restart. Peter McCarty goes through. Brendan Coyne running in third behind Pierce Brown. Pierce Brown in the BMW. Just watch McCarty, the style of him as he throws the Renault 5 through the corner, still with those handling problems. Pierce Brown comes through in that BMW compact. And he gets it low, and McCarty there comes across in front of him, and Pierce Brown just tags him there. Oh, uh, that has broke the... Uh, steering rack on Peter McCardle's car and I think it's uh, affected Pierce Brown as well and that has handed the lead to Brendan Coyne who comes up to take the checker flag ahead of Chris Grimes. 
Well, we've been having some great racing so far here today in Mondello Park. Join us again after the break. Welcome back to Mondello Park, where we turn our attention to the junior class now. And one young man who's certainly in top gear is Robert Critchley. Robert Critchley, you're racing here in the juniors today, but it's actually your first year racing. How are you finding it? Oh, it's going well this year. Um, the first race went out and we blew an engine. And um, other than that, it's been going well up to now. And Robert, I hear you have a nickname, the Stig. Where did you get that from? Um, I started racing in a field in um, Tiowa. And I was flying around, and one of William's friends, my stepdad, um, started calling me the stake, and that's it's caught on to me then. All the lads call me that now, so we put it on the car, you know. Well, Robert has stewed the opportunity to wear the blacked out helmet, uh, distinctive of the stake, of course, from uh, BBC's Top Gear. But nonetheless, uh, a very fine driver only gets tagged there. We put the curse of the commentator on Robert. You can see the stake as he got tagged and spun around and dropped him right back to the end of the field. Callum Sherlock was uh, uh, in there, Eamon Blake also. We're, we're with uh, Callum Sherlock now in the polo. He's, of course, just the youngsters, one litre class. Then we have Eamon Blake coming through in the Peugeot next. And Robert Critchley now making a comeback in the little micro. And closing up all the time, he had a considerable amount uh, of work to do, but he's uh, certainly doing it in fine style. He's already got himself alongside him and Blake and picked up a spot. So despite that uh, spin at the very start of this, he's fought back valiantly, now finds himself up to second place. Question is, though, can he uh, track down Callum Sherlock in the polo? Sherlock there just exiting the hole in the hedge, doesn't... Uh, quite seem to have the power in the polo as with the Micra so a nice uh, driving academy there sponsoring the Micra and here comes uh, Robert Critchley down the inside into Dunlop that's a classic Mondello manoeuvre up the inside as they go into Dunlop he's run out a bit wide he's on the last lap that's where he needs to be in the lead the Stig aka Robert Critchley comes up to take the checker flag Samantha Tom, you're out today in the juniors. You're definitely one of the more experienced drivers out here today because of your trips over to the UK. Yeah, we have had eight rounds over there and uh, came third in the British Life Cross Championship and now we're over here to finish the Irish and start the winter series. George, like you've got you know, you've got good experience from the UK rally cross. Yeah, uh, the all the BDRDA and all those championships. Been out in the car a few times, but I think it's one of my last events, so I'm sad to leave the car. One of your last events because you're leaving the juniors, aren't you? Yeah, too old for it now. Well, that win in the previous heat was enough to give Robert Critchley the uh, accolade of driver of the day. Meanwhile, back with the action for the juniors, George Tracy Jr. here in the mini leads Samantha Tom into the first corner. Patrick Donahue comes through there with a little puff of blue smoke in third place as they go down to the hole in the hedge. It is George Tracy Jr. leading from Samantha Tom. These two are well used to battling with one another through the rounds of the British Championship where, of course, only the minis are allowed to run, whereas for the Irish Junior Championship, any one-litre car is uh, allowed to run. But certainly the amount of development that has gone into the minis still see them as the car to have. As Samantha Tom comes alongside George Tracy Jr. now on the run down the straight, George on the outside, Samantha there in the red on the inside, but she's got to move out to uh, get a good run at Rallycross 1. And as they come out of that corner, then down to the hole in the hedge, George Tracy Jr. still leading, defending there the inside line, leaving no room for Samantha to get through. But Samantha is uh, somebody who's able to uh, make that mini very, very narrow and get through in the tightest of spots. She's crawling all over the rear bumper of Tracy's car now. As they take the run up to Dunlop, Samantha goes out the outside. Can she switch back on the inside? George has that covered. Good line there from George Tracy. Comes down the straight. George Tracy comes up to take the checker flag. Samantha Tom comes home in second. George, great battle there with Samantha Tom. You weren't going to let her pass you too easy. Uh, no, she's a great driver, but uh, I tried to keep it in, try to get a good time, and I didn't let her pass. And are you all set now for the finals? 
uh, yeah, hopefully I got a good time there, so hopefully I'll be up near the front row for a second or third. Well, the performance in that heat was enough to give George Tracy Jr. pole position. Samantha Tom there in the centre, and Robert Critchley on the outside of that front row as they head away. And it's George Tracy Jr. with the early lead from Samantha Tom. Robert Critchley then is next up. Patrick Dunahoo is next. Sherlock then. As they go down to the hole in the hedge, and already George Tracy has built up a good lead over Samantha. But uh, we know from previous form that Samantha Tom is not uh, going to be beaten easily in this one. She's going to fight tooth and nail for this. George there driving perfect lines as he comes up to Dunlop, holding a nice tight line on the inside. And Robert Critchley has got alongside Samantha Tom there. There's been a little touch between those two and it's uh, door handle to door handle then as they come down the main straight Robert Critchley there in the micro on the left Samantha Tom in the mini having to give best to the micro but Samantha comes back at him and Samantha now has got the inside line for the hole in the hedge and that uh, brings her back up to second a great battle of cat and mouse between these two and it's extraordinary to see uh, little micro that we see on the road how big it looks beside the mini when you actually see them uh, go door handle to door handle. Robert Critchley has a look at the inside line again up to Dunlop and he manages to prize his way through. Samantha switches back, comes back at him she's been uh, very good at that carries a lot of speed into the corner and uh, getting a good run out. She comes back and retakes that second place turning onto the rough again at the top of the main straight George Tracy Jr. is enjoying this, he's watching the mirrors and he can see the battle happening behind him as Samantha Tom holds off the close attentions of Robert Critchley George Tracy still from Samantha Samantha now decides well the best way of avoiding Robert Critchley is to battle with George Tracy and she gets alongside George makes it go the long way around at Dunlop she's now in the centre George Tracy is on the grass Robert Critchley getting the work over from Samantha there oh and they're certainly uh, battling hard these three it's now three abreast into rally cross one and George Tracy has a uh, Retaken the lead ahead of Robert Critchley. Samantha Tom now to post to third. That's not going to be for too long, though. George Tracy there doing his breaking after the corner, which was uh, rather surprising. And now getting the work over from Robert Critchley, who's helping him along as they come through the S's up to Dunlop. They're on their last lap now. Robert Critchley there takes a look at the outside line. He's helping the little mini of George Tracy along and he's managed to muscle his way through in the best of ways. Samantha Tom also in there, but it looks like Robert Critchley holds her off and Robert Critchley comes up to take a great win. Samantha Tom in second and George Tracy Jr. third. Confirmation of the results then for the Junior A final. Robert Critchley the winner, Samantha Tom second and George Tracy Jr. third. Robert Critchley, or should I be calling you this, Steve? That was a fantastic three-way battle you just had there. Oh, best race of my life, so it was. Oh, just brilliant. Couldn't ask for more out of the car. Everyone here today was hanging for so they were. Oh, brilliant day, so it was. We go then to the Supercar A final with Dermot Carnegie on pole position, Tommy Graham in the centre. That's Derek Job. On the far side there is George Tracy Sr., but it looks like Dermot Carnegie gets it well hooked up off the line and leads to the first corner ahead of George Tracy in the Metro 6 r forward. Then Derek Job, then Tommy Graham as they go down to the hole in the hedge. Dermot Carnegie leading in the Fiesta. He must be delighted with the performance of this car. He struggled in the early part of last season in the British Rallycross Championship, but now he seems to have this car well bedded in and driving in the typical Kalani flick uh, fashion that we expect from Dermot Carnegie. The two escorts then of Derek Job and Tommy Graham battling away and Graham looks like he's got through on the inside ahead of Derek Job. That really was a superb piece of driving by the flamboyant Tommy Graham ahead of uh, Paul Grogan there. Back at the hole in the hedge. Dermot Carnegie now with a good lead built up over George Tracy in the Metro 6 or 4 Certainly gap in technology between these two. The little Fiesta is just brand new out of the box. The Metro 6 or 4 has been with us, thankfully, for quite a number of years, benefiting this year 
from the improvement in that car of a sequential gearbox. But honours uh, today must go to the fiesta of Dermot Kearney. Tommy Graham goes home there in third. Derek Job had to settle for fourth. Confirmation of the result then. Dermot Carnegie in the focus to winner. George Tracy in the Metro 6R4 was second. And Tommy Graham in the escort third. Dermot, another win. You got off to a great start there. Yeah, I was lucky. I got, the, I got a good start. And I was watching in the mirrors there. And George was very close there for a while. But when I started to lose him there a bit, I didn't really relax because... Yeah, he was there. close. Yeah, he was there the whole time. So... Uh, I just had to keep on it the whole way, so uh, it's getting fairly dark now, so I don't know if they'll run the super final or not, but if they do, I'll be ready for it anyway. From the supercars, we go to the darkening conditions for the modified final. That's Desi Tierney. There's Willie Coyne on the outside of the front row. His brother, Michael Coyne, here on the left of your picture, is on pole position. Brendan Coyne then in that red Fiesta 110 is in the centre. And away they go into the first corner. Michael Coyne battling on the inside. Desi Tierney turning in there. Michael Coyne catches the tyres on the inside. And that has put uh, the Nova on its roof. And that is Michael Coyne. We see movement there inside the car, so hopefully, yes, door open. And uh, hopefully Michael Coyne is okay. He comes out and gives a wave to the crowd. Well, the showman as ever, that, of course, has brought out the uh, red flags. And we take a look at that start again. Desi Tierney in the Tigre was turning in. Michael Coyne was tight there, but he did catch those tyres on the inside and uh, you can see the brake lights coming on on his brother Brendan's car, obviously looking out for his uh, brother there. Now we have the restart. We have Willie Coyne on the outside. Desi Tierney gets away then. And now you've got Willie Coyne ahead of Brendan Coyne and Kieran Kern there shoots out wide, gets himself restarted again. Tierney and the Tigre then out in front ahead of Willie Coyne. Then we have Brendan Coyne in a Fiesta. But it's the Tigra of Desi Tierney that's out in front, showing a clean pair of heels to the two Coyne boys. Willie Coyne there, as you heard, he's in an 8-valve Nova, and certainly the older technology beginning to show here as the Tigra extends the lead. Brendan Coyne now with a move on his brother Willie, goes out the outside. Can he make that one stick? Forced to duck back in again. The light disappearing very fast here at Mondello Park. That's Mark Carroll running in fourth. Barry McCardle is fifth. But the real battle in this one is between those coin boys from Tala and Dublin, one of three uh, racing brothers. You saw their brother Michael uh, roll the car in the earlier part of this heat. But Brendan and Willie battling it out now. They're on their last lap as they come up to Dunlop. And Willie Coyne looks like he's got this one in the bag. Desi Tierney comes home to take the win. Willie Coyne now on the outside. Can he hold on for brother Brendan? It's going to be neck and neck at the line and Willie Coyne just holding on there. Confirmation of the results for the modified A final then. Desi Tierney and the Tigre the winner. Willie Coyne and the Nova second and Brendan Coyne in the Fiesta came home in third. Well that's it from Mandela Park for round two of the Irish Winter Rallycross Championship. Unfortunately, daylight got the better of us here today and for safety reasons, the supercar final will not run. But still, we had some fantastic racing from Dermot Carnegie as he took first place in the supercar A final. For myself and the team, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.